19-year-old charged after allegedly stabbing man during an altercation in Hanover. A 19-year-old man was arrested and charged with wounding with intent following an alleged stabbing of a man with a ratchet knife in Hanover on Thursday, March 7. Charged is Moses James of Archard Housing Scheme, Hopewell in the parish. Reports from the Lucy Police are that about 9.50 a.m., James and Ahmad had an argument which developed into a fight. James then allegedly used a ratchet knife to stab the man in his upper body. The police were summoned and the injured man was assisted to hospital, where he was admitted in a stable but serious condition. James was arrested and later charged on Saturday, March 9. His court date is being finalized. Firearm ammunition seized in St. Catherine Lawmen assigned to the St. Catherine Sword Proactive Investigative Unit seized one firearm and several rounds of ammunition on Watson Boulevard, Cedar Grove, Portmore, St. Catherine on Saturday. Reports are that about 5.20 p.m., Lawmen were canvassing the area, which led to an open lot being searched. The search yielded one Taurus pistol loaded with a magazine containing four 9mm rounds of ammunition. The weapon was subsequently seized. No one was arrested in connection with the seizure. Electrician charged with housebreaking and larceny. A 32-year-old man from Portland has been arrested and charged with housebreaking and larceny after he is accused of stealing $254,000 along with a number of household items on Friday, March 8. He is Kemar Howard, an electrician of Windsor Rio Grande in the parish. Reports from the Port Antonio Police are that about 6 p.m., Howard allegedly broke into the complainant's house and stole one component set, one music box, one block point television, and $250,000. It was reported that Howard then contacted the complainant and informed him that he had stolen the items. According to the police, the man turned himself into the police on Saturday, March 9, and was subsequently charged. He is scheduled to appear before the Port Antonio Parish Court on Tuesday, April 9. Manchester Police Targeting Prado Thieves The Manchester Police say they have been targeting Prado larcenists in the parish. On Friday, the police, along with the public health inspectors and personnel from the Veterinary Services Division of the Ministry of Agriculture, carried out operations in the poorest Christian and Mandeville markets and slaughterhouses in Berrydale, Christiana, and Comfort, as well as some undisclosed meat shops. Five people were warned for prosecution for operating without food handlers' permit. Between January 11 to 24, seven heads of cattle were butchered and four wounded by thieves. The police say the operations are ongoing and are aimed at identifying those who purchase stolen animals and agricultural produce from predator thieves. Manchester has been hit hard by predator thieves since last year into the new year. Indian charged with shop breaking and larceny. A 32 year old man from Westmoreland has been charged with shop breaking and larceny after he allegedly broke into an establishment in Escher District, Hanover, on Thursday, February 22. He is Christopher Tomlinson, otherwise called Indian, a laborer of White House in the parish. Reports from the Lucy Police are that about 2 a.m., a woman and her spouse locked up their establishment and left. Checks were subsequently made on the security system when two men were observed at the rear of the premises. The police were alerted and on their arrival, the men were seen fleeing the scene. Further investigations revealed that five gaming boxes were broken into and an undetermined sum of cash was stolen. Alcoholic beverages and cigarettes valued at over $71,000 were also reportedly taken off the shelves. The scene was processed by members of the Air One Technical Services Division and following investigative leads, Tomlinson was arrested on Sunday, March 3rd. He was later charged after he was positively pointed out on an identification parade. His court date is being finalized. Former Councillor Assault Case Rescheduled to March 14 The case against former St. James Municipal Corporation Council, David Brown, who is accused of attacking his ex-girlfriend during a confrontation in May 2023, has been pushed back for a hearing on March 14, following his latest appearance in the St. James Parish Court on Monday. Brown, who is charged with assault occasioning bodily harm and malicious destruction of property, had his bail extended when his mother was briefly mentioned before presiding parish judge Sasha Marie Ashley. During Monday's court proceedings, it was disclosed that Brown attorney Albert Morgan was absent due to illness. This resulted in the case being rescheduled for March 14 when it is expected that the matter will again be mentioned. The allegations are that on May 28, 2003, 
The complainant with whom Brown was in a relationship was sitting in her car when Brown knocked on the vehicle window. The two got into a quarrel during which Brown hit the complainant in her face, causing pain and swelling and also damaged her car window. Brown, who served as the St. James Municipal Corporation Council for the Montego Bay West Division, was subsequently suspended from the Jamaica Labour Party following his arrest and charge. Notably, during Brown's previous court appearance on March 8, the court was advised that the complainant had expressed no desire to continue pursuing the case, but had neither submitted a statement to the police to indicate her intentions of discontinuing the matter, nor did she attend court. During past court hearings of the matter, Morgan had indicated that Brown and the complainant were attending mediation and counseling sessions at the probation office. The court had ordered that both parties attend restorative justice sessions where the matter was mentioned on July 12, 2023. Brown had previously run a fall of the law in 2018 in relation to an outstanding warrant from the St. James Family Court about a matter with the mother of his child and also for allegedly hitting a 65-year-old man with a license for her arm on August 3 that year. Brown spent five days in police custody before eventually being released. The assault case was discontinued in 2019 after the complainant indicated that he did not wish to proceed any further against Brown. Prior to his August 2018 arrest, Brown was under fire for reportedly verbally abusing a woman on social media in March 2018. At that time, the St. James Municipal Corporation Minority Caucus of the Possessional Party served notice that they would bring a motion to have Brown suspended for his alleged actions. Child Diversion Program Offering a Second Chance to Children Since its implementation in March 2020, the Child Diversion Program in the Ministry of Justice has been steering youngsters in conflict with the law away from the criminal justice system. The initiative, which is the Social Justice Division of the Ministry, targets children aged 12 to 17 years, providing them with individualized, diverse programs tailored to their needs. Director of the Child Diversion Branch, Venetia Clark, said the aim is to prevent children from having criminal records going into adulthood for mistakes they made at a young age. Say for example, we have a child who stole from a shop in a community and the shopkeeper found out about it, it was reported. When they realized that the child said, I'm sorry about doing that, I just wanted some food for myself and my siblings and so on and so forth, the shopkeeper now has the option to instead of criminalizing this child for this man offense, Consent to the child going to the child diversion program, Clark explained. She stated, the participation in the program is completely voluntary and requires the consent of the victim of the offense to be utilized in keeping with the law and to ensure fairness for the victim. The victim has the right to redress, however, in this situation, we offer the victim the option of this alternative justice service. So the victim consents to the child coming to the program, the child accepts responsibility for the offense, this does not mean that you are saying I am guilty or innocent. What it means is that they are saying I am willing to be a part of the program the director pointed out. Given the nature of the program, referrals are only made by the court or the police. Clark said the child is then sent to one of the 14 child diversion offices across the island where a risk and needs assessment is done so a personalized program can be created for the child. The child and their parents or guardians come and we ask them a lot of questions about who they are, what it is like at school, what is it like at home, do they get bored easily, have they experienced any traumatic th things in their life, all those questions we asked before because we want to get an understanding of who the child is, she stated. Once a child is better understood in a holistic way, rather than only by the offense they have or accused of committing, the child diversion program then shifts to understanding the root cause of the offense. So the example that I gave before the child stealing, the child may have stolen something, but the root cause of the issue is probably poverty, or it's probably poverty or some traumatic experience that the child has been through, Clark stated. She added that the program does not solely focus on the offense for which the child was referred. Other issues will be addressed should they arise during the program. A key part of the child diversion program is mentorship, where the children are given the opportunity to work with positive role models who can help guide them on a better path. The Child Divergent Branch is always looking for a new mentor to add to the complement. Jamaicans over the age of 18 years who wish to apply to be a mentor may access the mentorship application on the ministry's website www.mog.gov.jm or any of the 14 parish offices. For more information on the Child Divergent Program, 
individuals may visit the Ministry of Justice's website at mog.gov.jm or by calling 888-JUSTICE, that's 888-587-8423. CRH redevelopment has trend in health infrastructure in Western Jamaica. The government's investment in the redevelopment of the Connor Regional Hospital, CRH, has expanded and strengthened the health infrastructure in Western Jamaica through the upgrading and equipping of several facilities, says Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton. He was addressing a recent meeting at the Standing Finance Committee in the House of Representatives. Dr. Tufton noted that the multi-billion dollar project, which necessitated the evacuation of the hospital building and the relocation of services, included the renewal of private facility and the purchase of equipment for several hospitals and health centers in the Western Regional Health Authority to accommodate patients who would have normally been treated at CRH. Every hospital benefited from the expenditure, primarily Falmouth, the compound of Cornwall, and Noel Holmes and the Savannah Lamar Public General Hospital, he stated. He informed that funds have been spent on supporting infrastructure, such as parking for the adjoint Western Children and Adolescent Hospital, a new roof for the Falmouth Hospital, along with renovation and extension of the outpatient department improvement to drainage system and electrical and plumbing works. In addition, several pieces of equipment have been purchased to replace outdated tools and machines. The objectives of the redevelopment project are geared towards improving the service delivery in the public health system by rehabilitating the CRH to include heating, ventilation and air conditioning system, mechanical, electrical and plumbing, information and communication technology, and equipping the institution. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.